Welcome to another edition of Game Pro TV. On today's show, we'll show you the game that Robert De Niro, Errol Smith, and other Hollywood celebrities have just put together. We'll have a conversation with the two men who created the entire Mortal Kombat series and give you a sneak peek of a game that's poised to take the entire industry by storm, Tomb Raider. But first, rules and regulations. This is how our review system works. Each game that we review is judged and rated in four categories. Graphics, in which we focus on the look and feel of the game. Control, in which we tell you how easy or how difficult it is to perform the game character's actions. Sound, in which we tell you if the audio action keeps up with the visual. And Fun Factor, where we sum up the entire game and tell you, quite frankly, if it's enjoyable or not. Each category of the game receives a rating that can go from 1.0 to 5.0, one being absolutely horrible and five being absolutely awesome. The actual ratings will appear at the end of the review, where we'll sum up the whole thing. In addition to reviews, we also give you tips and tactics in our Swap Pro segment. In fact, later in the show, we'll help you get through parts of Nintendo's latest game, Super Mario 64. But first, let's take a look at EA Sports Madden 97. EA Sports tried to capture the look and feel of an NFL telecast, and they pretty much succeeded by having Fox's James Brown handle pregame introductions, and Madden and Summerall give the player on-camera tips before the game. When you're going into the win, like today, there's no way you can throw the ball. But what most gamers really care about is the action on the field, and EA made sure that no player would walk away disappointed. All 30 stadiums were rendered for the game and make an appearance in a sweeping fly-through before the coin toss. Of course, all the teams are present, but in addition to the 30 that are in existence now, all the teams that have ever played in the Super Bowl are present as well. And as if that weren't enough, you can also have the all man team strap on their helmets as well. Another cool aspect of Madden 97 is that not only can you handle all the action on the field, but you can also try your hand at running the front office where you have to deal with real life concerns such as a salary cap. You can also create a player, but the better that player is, the more money he's going to demand, affecting your cap even more. All of these new options add extra dimensions to Madden 97, but none of it matters if the gameplay misses the mark, and like all the other Madden football games of the past, Madden 97 doesn't fall short in any way. There are over 300 players to learn, and the players in the game play up to or down to their real NFL counterparts. Passing the ball can be a bit tricky and take a while to get used to. In some cases, you have six receivers to choose from on a single play, and figuring out how to complete a pass will have your fingers flying all over the control pad. But once you get used to the configurations, you'll be marching up and down the field like a pro. One criticism of Madden 97 is that after a while, John Madden's in-game comments will start to get repetitive and lame. That one didn't surprise anyone. And the pre-game introductions by Brown, Hello, Summerall, and Madden are so generic, they border on being completely unnecessary. Thank you, JB and John. We do have a lot of win today. What do you think our team... But aside from that, Madden 97 is a winner and has a huge lead on some of the other football games that are due out this year. Let's see if they can hold on to it. Touchdown. Back in the 80s when Centipede and Pac-Man were the hits of the arcade, two video game designers had a dream to create the ultimate fighting game. Uh, both Ed Boon and myself wanted to explore the possibilities of doing a fighting game, um, and we both had our different ideas on it, and we kind of came together and talked about that uh, and decided that, uh, that this was something we wanted to pursue. And when that dream finally became reality, it revolutionized the video game industry forever. I think we finished the game in eight months, and uh, we put it on test in the arcades, and everybody, you know, we noticed a big crowd of people around it, and we knew we had something, you know, at least popular. We didn't know it was going to become what it did. Since 1991, Mortal Kombat has sold more than 15 million home games. More than $570 million have been dropped into the arcade machines, and two feature films have been produced based on the hit arcade game. I don't think we could have guessed in a million years that it, that it would get to this level. And um, now, you know, when, when something big happens, uh, it doesn't take us back as much, you know. We don't, we don't get um, intimidated by it, really. We just kind of like feel like it's all part of the process and it's just all the more pressure to make the next game better because there's, it, it becomes expected that everything with the name Mortal Kombat on it is going to be the biggest thing, you know, in its, in its industry. But after all the success, you'd think video game designers Ed Boon and John Tobias would take a break from all the frenzy. Wrong. They're busy working around the clock, cranking out the next installment in the Mortal Kombat legacy, MK4. The eagerly awaited 3D version, which will hit the arcades next year. I think both of us are real fighting game fans. Uh, 
number one. I mean, we play all the games that are out there. Um, some we like, some we don't like. Uh, Mortal Kombat, we try to keep as original as possible. Um, I think uh, competition-wise, uh, we always seem to just beat everybody out in the arcades. I mean, it's, there's, there's uh, you know, we're pretty confident, I think, when we put one of the games out that it's going to do real well. We've managed to, to do these games relatively quick because we're really trying to capitalize on the anticipation that the public has for the next one. Unfortunately, you know, they're, they're a lot less patient than, than, than we have time to, uh, to, to execute them. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, of, of work that people don't realize goes into these games, but still we really want to keep this, this Mortal Kombat thing, you know, fresh and current. Their latest creation is MK Trilogy, a compilation which will be made available for the Sony PlayStation and the Nintendo 64. Whenever we release an arcade version of the game, we're limited by memory constraints, and there's only so many characters we can fit in. What we decided to do with Trilogy was just kind of uh, introduce every character that we've ever uh, created uh, in, in the uh, previous three Mortal Kombat games, uh, just to kind of give the player uh, the ultimate Mortal Kombat experience. We're working on Mortal Kombat 4, uh, Mortal Kombat Mythologies, um, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, and as well as, you know, Mortal, Ultimate Mortal Kombat for the home games. So it's kind of become a, um, it's just like this beast that we have to keep feeding. Stay with us, GamePro TV will be right back. Sega Saturn. EA went all out to bring you the most unique and realistic war simulation game on the market today. Now get us out quick. Get set for Soviet strike. EA picked the brains of the top military experts to make Soviet strike as real as you get. I believe in large measure the expertise that I have garnered and brought to the game is not so much as to what the attack strike helicopter did in this situation as much as what the individual might do in a real situation. The, the games you play are for fun. The games we play are for real. I think that we also had an opportunity to pass on some of the ideas about the importance of thinking in modern war. Uh, war is no longer a brute force thing by any means, that the side, the player, the commander who does the best thinking, other things being equal is probably the one who's going to win. Utilizing actual combat situations, EA designers bring the game to life. The action side's very intense. It's the, uh, it's, it's the equivalent of an action movie in a video game. Uh, there's lots of uh, plot twists, there's lots of thrilling rescues, there's lots of big surprises. Uh, it's not just kind of a, a mindless go blow things up. There's a progressive push-pull to the story that takes the, the player more and more into the situation that they're in. We're in grave danger. He's fighting to try. I think Soviet Strike is a really good example of Hollywood meeting Silicon Valley. Uh, the typical scenario we have in Strike is you get to be the hero. You take, it's a lone chopper, you get to take a co-pilot, you go behind enemy lines, you have 11th hour rescues, you have last ditch efforts, you have high speed car chases. So the action is very intense in what you're doing in the product, and the product plays out very much like a Hollywood movie. So we took this map and then we scanned it into the computer, where right on the de development station, the implementers could see the map, see where the roads go. So what we were able to do is to you know, take a chopper like this and fly through the world, following the arrows, uh, you know, acting as if what it would be like to attack this many tanks at one time, uh, you know, coming over here and visiting this village, or you know, heading over this way and you know, rescuing our co-pilot from the uh, sanitarium. 
I've been taken prisoner with several other agents. Full motion video is also used throughout the game to add to the chaotic frenzy of warfare. Ultimately, when we were shooting the video, we uh, went on location to Prague and uh, shot a number of the newscasts uh, so we would have a realistic Eastern European feel to it. We paid a lot of attention to detail. We're constantly trying to make things behave pretty much as they would within the limits of the technology and the hardware. So, you know, the vehicles, when they move around corners, they slide a little bit. Um, we've tried to put lots of touches in on the waves here, go up and down gently. So, I'd say it, increase, it creates a much, much more realistic and more involving experience. What I want to do is why don't we climb on up and we can show you some of the, some of the stuff inside. When the EA people were down here, they clearly wanted to have a chance to, to hear the tanks, to see how they ran. It gave them some idea of the, the, how you can knock a tank out and when you have to be careful about the tank knocking you out. If you're looking for high-powered strategic war simulation, EA Soviet Strike is right on target. Mission accomplished. All right, now let's help you make some sense out of Super Mario 64 in our Swap Pro segment. If you own a Nintendo 64, you probably own Super Mario 64. And if you own Super Mario 64, you're probably asking yourself, how in the world am I supposed to finish this game? Well, we'll show you. In Super Mario 64, there are 120 stars to collect, but you only need to gather 70 to finish the game. There are six stars to gather in course number one. We'll show you where the first three are. First, follow the dirt path up and head through this hole in the gate. Stay on the path all the way up to the top of the hill, avoiding the rolling balls as you go. Once you reach the top, you'll go up against a sub-boss. Beating him is pretty easy. Just run behind him. Press the B button to grab him. Then move the joystick in a circular motion to spin him. Then press the B button again to give him a toss. Do this three times and you'll beat him. Your reward? Star number one. To get star number two, re-enter the course and you'll encounter a giant turtle that will invite you to race to the top of the hill. Don't worry about running as fast as you can. We'll show you a shortcut to the top. As you head up the hill, enter the first hole you see along the way. Once inside, you'll warp to the top of the hill. At that point, you just wait for your slow turtle friend to make it to the top. The prize for winning the race? Here we go! Now, to collect the third star, re-enter the course again and talk to the red bomb guys. Of course, they will be talking in English, unlike the Japanese version we've got. When you're done talking to them, all the cannons in the course will open. Now, head up the dirt path again and jump over the fence to one of those cannons. Hop in and shoot yourself up to the floating plot of land above. Once there, jump up and hit the yellow box and voila, the third star. Stay tuned to future episodes of GamePro TV for more help with this incredible game or get a copy of GamePro Magazine for in-depth advice as well. Hey, Mario wasn't the only game released for the Nintendo 64. Pilot Wing 64 also hit the shelves on September 29th. The basic premise of Pilot Wings is to use the principles and laws of flight to perform airborne maneuvers and to land successfully on specified landing targets. To a degree, Pilot Wings is a flight simulator, but a flight simulator with a Nintendo touch. In the beginning of the game, you can choose to fly via the wind-dependent, free-floating, hang glider, the powerful and difficult to control rocket pack, or the less powerful and more controllable gyrocopter. Pilot Wing 64 has a comfortable, laid-back appeal. The action moves at a moderate pace and feels more realistic than most other video games on the market. But don't be fooled, Pilot Wings is a tough game to play and is very addictive. You'll find yourself flying through these beautifully rendered 3D worlds again and again, trying to get the course and landing right. Like Mario 64, Pilot Wings gameplay is completely non-linear, meaning you can fly anywhere you want, but in some cases, wandering too far off course could cost you dearly. If, for example, you run out of wind beneath your hang glider wings, you could find yourself headed for a vicious tumble. Nintendo obviously knew that the worlds they created were going to be beautiful, because in some cases, you have the ability to take snapshots of the scenery along the way. The control can be tricky in places, and the soundtrack will start to get on your nerves after a while. But other than that, it showcases the power of the Nintendo 64 with smooth graphics and a series of complete 3D worlds. Pilot Wing 64 won't blow you away at first sight, but it has an appeal and a personality that will grow on you and force you to come back and play again and again, especially if you're a flight simulation fan. When we come back, we'll give you a first look at the much-anticipated Tomb Raider, 
Stay with us. There are lots of good reasons to go with Sega Saturn instead of Nintendo. We call them games. Sega Saturn has tons of them. Nintendo has just a few. It does beg the question, do you want to play or twiddle your thumbs? Face it, Nintendo. You weren't worth waiting for. This is a two-part question, James. At the start of the third quarter, it looked like they dropped back into a rotating zone. At what point did you begin utilizing the back cut, enabling the off-guard to break free and become the shooting guard, drawing his defender out of the lane and freeing you to take that no-look pass and finish with that triple tomahawk? Uh, uh, also, was that the turning point in the game? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> quarter it looked like they dropped back into a if you love video games you need game pro magazine each monthly issue is packed full of tips and tactics reviews previews secret codes hot news passwords game winning strategy guides advanced game systems home pc games plus regular features on sports role playing and fighting games call game pro's hot tips hotline at 1-900-860 tips visit game pro on the World Wide web or america online at keyword game pro Game Pro, the number one multi-platform gaming magazine. Pick one up wherever magazines are sold. Hey, tell us what you think of the show. Write us at Game Pro Magazine. Dear Editor, PO Box 5828, San Mateo, California, 94402. Or email us at America Online, keyword Game Pro. Hollywood and the video game industry often work hand in hand, combining their talents to produce some of the hottest games on the market. I say a movie, you know, that's all backstory that's behind what's going on, and you, you show some things in the film, of course, but this you show so many different sides of one situation, one character, one whatever. Today, Tribeca Interactive and GT Interactive, two of the fastest growing entertainment software companies, have joined forces to bring you Nine for the home computer. The storyline of Nine uh, involves a place called The Last Resort, a resort for artists, painters, poets, writers, uh, to come when they lost their inspiration, when their creative juices had gone dry. Uh, it was sort of a fantasy island for artisans. Some of Hollywood's biggest celebrities lent their voices to breathe life into the Nine characters. As film producers, we bring uh, you know, a great deal to, to the party here because we can access all kinds of talent, whether that's Cher or Christopher Reeve or Aerosmith, all of who are doing our game nine. We are compelled to remove that from your grasp! Even Steven Tyler and Joe Perry of Aerosmith found time to give the game an added twist. You know, we're really excited to, to actually see it done, you know, because it's like all these pieces, the way, the way these games are put together, it's so, so in pieces, you know, like the, from the concept on the storyboard to seeing bits and pieces on, on somebody's power book and then um, throwing the voices in, it's always exciting to see it all put together, you know, so we're, we're excited about that. The unique and bizarre world of Nine was created by famous rock album cover designer Mark Wrighton. When you're doing, you know, an album cover, you have one shot, one composition to work out. On the game, I'm doing more like interior decorating, designing a whole room, which has to look good from lots of different angles, so it's not one composition, it's a multitude of compositions. The possibilities are really endless with the, with the, the CD-ROM. You can really see the potential to do just about anything. With the combined talents of Hollywood and GT Interactive, Nine takes PC games to a new level. Welcome to the last resort. Ah! Now let's take a look at a couple of games due out soon. Tomb Raider by Core Design has got the whole industry waiting with anticipation. The main character is Laura Croft, and the world she explores is completely 3D. But what's most impressive is that the player can move anywhere at any time, adding to the game's realism. Laura's animation is intriguing as well. As you can see, she can do more than just walk around and enjoy the sights. Core Design paid specific attention to how she interacted with her environment. Tomb Raider is a platform game like Sony's Crash Bandicoot and Sega's Knights, but at this point, it already looks as though it may surpass both of those in quality. Tomb Raider will be available mid-November. Acclaim is set to hit the gridiron this year with another installment of NFL quarterback Club 97. 
All 30 NFL teams will be present along with their current player rosters and over 500 new plays to choose from. Acclaim used the same patented motion capture technology as they used in the making of their moderately successful title, Big Hurt Baseball. This time, they brought in Adrian Morrell and Lonnie Young of the New York Jets for the process. Now I'm seeing how bad I look. <laughs> Last year's quarterback club didn't set the world on fire. And this year, with Mad 97 already out and Sony's football game on the way, the competition looks pretty tough. Quarterback club will be available later this month. Now, let's take a look at GamePro TV's top 10 video games of the month. Stay with us, Game Pro TV will be right back. Minnesota Twins' Brad Radke. Last season, he struck out 75 batters, pitched two complete games, and gave up 32 home runs. stats all 28 ballparks sega sports world series baseball 2 authentic is wrigley real is radley When I was young, I discovered music and practiced to become a musician. Later, I joined the Navy and became an officer and learned about discipline and teamwork and doing your best. Then playing pro ball, the dream of a lifetime. These are the things I love. These are my choices. But none of them would have come true if I hadn't made an important decision a long time ago. I don't do drugs. That's what's worked for me. Think about it. Well, that would just about do it for this show. Check your local listings to see when this one replays. And join us next month when we'll bring you all the latest games plus tips and hints as well. So until then, play on. If you love video games, you need Game Pro Magazine. Each monthly issue is packed full of tips and tactics, reviews, previews, secret codes, hot news, passwords, game-winning strategy guides, advanced game systems, home PC games, plus regular features on sports, role-playing, and fighting games. Call Game Pro's Hot Tips Hotline at 1-900-860-TIPS. Visit Game Pro on the World Wide Web or America Online at keyword Game Pro. Game Pro, the number one multi-platform gaming magazine. Pick one up wherever magazines are sold.